Hello, Leo. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Leo is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your tarot card reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. It is totally free, it doesn't cost you anything. If there's something you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Leo, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And uh, Ace of Swords. Clarity. Uh, this could be a light bulb moment. right? This could be the sudden flash of insight. The sudden great idea that we've been waiting for, that we've been struggling to find. Um, I kind of feel like you've been, you've been searching for the next step or the next, um, maybe the next great idea, the next invention, the next big thing in your life, right? And I feel like maybe there was some struggle to find that, that you were, kind, you were racking your brain trying to figure out uh, the answer to some question or to, um, to see clearly what the next step was going to be. Then I think you put it out of your mind, okay? Then I think you went and did something else. You got something to eat, watched a movie. And then, bam, there it is, All right? It came to you in a flash. I feel like it came to you quite suddenly. Um, Spirit's also telling me that something fell from a shelf recently, but it didn't break. There's something valuable. I don't know if it was a vase or some kind of statue or something, but it fell. And it was kind of like a, a gasp moment, but it was fine. It didn't break, right? Interesting. Uh, let's put that Ace of Swords into some context. Let's see what might be um, going on with that. All right. Well, now we've got the Justice or Adjustment card. And I think that's very significant, too, because that is... Um, well, it's kind of a judgment. We're weighing the options. We're weighing the pros and cons of something. Um, but in a way that's not, it's, I mean, it's air energy, but it's not, right? It's not like we're doing that with a seven uh, of swords or something. It is, uh, this is some divine energy. This is like a spiritual discernment. This is like an intuition almost that, um, almost like it's coming from somewhere else, this kind of, um, this evaluation of things, right? Let's, let's keep going. Now we've got a 10, a 10 of wands. Yeah, I think that you were really, you, you put in tremendous energy into something and we were looking for that, for that answer. I think we kind of took a break. We, we went inside to rest for a while and that's when that flash of, of insight hit you. Okay, but the Ten of Wands here is showing your, your ability to put in all of your energy. You're able to really commit all of your vitality uh, to, um, to whatever this work is, is going to be. And I'm not... I'm not sure what it is. Maybe it's something that it involves your family. Uh, it seems that it might be, um, it might be a business thing or it might be a career choice, but it seems like it's a decision that, that affects the whole family. Okay. It affects uh, the people that you love at least. Okay. Let's see what else we've got going on. Ace of pentacles. Wow. Jackpot. Jackpot. Um, two aces here. You've got the idea. You've got the certainty, the clarity. You can see in your mind's eye the path forward, and you're taking that step. And this really, I think, is going, this is, I mean, this is a one-to-one -one ratio, right? So it is an exact match. It's a perfect, a perfect manifestation of what you see in your mind, of this clarity, this certainty, this, this plan that's starting to kind of develop as we get further into this Libra energy, this adjustment card, um, this is us kind of allowing spirit to work through us to kind of flesh out the plan, right? But this is, yeah, this is the beginning of something good, right? And I don't think that anybody, uh, you especially, I think that you, you exhausted yourself and you kind of like you went inside and you took a nap and that's when it came to you, right? Like nobody saw this coming. 
but yet here it is. And now we're extending that water energy out. So it really begins and ends with this water energy, with this sense of connection, um, this sense, uh, a feeling of compassion or, or a, it could be a, a creative kind of sharing of your essence. Now with the three of, three of cups, usually this card, you know, well, it could be family, it could be celebrations, we could be talking about a, a family gathering or something. But in your case, I feel that this is your potential for this creative expression, for this love expression, for the expression of your essence in whatever form. And this is you now doing it. So it could be that your heart is so full, your spirit and soul are so just overflowing with love, with creativity, with abundance in whatever form. And this is you finding the right expression of it. Find, this is the medium through which you are going to express your true essence, your true self. All of this potential now is finding an outlet, right? Could be a creative outlet, could be, I mean, something financial. Let's keep going here. We've got a Knight of Wands, sure. We've got the Moon card, yeah. An Eight of Pentacles, good. Oh, and uh, another Court card here with a Prince of Cups. Um, you definitely don't want to sell out, right? You want to always make sure that you're, you're staying true to yourself, that you are staying authentic, right? Um, because what we have here, right, we've got the air in this. This is that certainty. This is that clarity. This is that idea. This is the truth, right? This is your will. This is your absolute truth for you, okay? This is your divine word, your logos, okay? And this is you expressing that out into the world and with whatever form or fashion, um, you know, is, is revealing itself to you. And this is also air and water. It's the Prince of Cups. This is you at the end of the day, making sure that you're always staying true to this word, to this divine truth, this absolute truth for you, your logos, your word, right? This certainty and clarity, this unity that you feel and that you're expressing, you want to make sure you're always staying true to that. And the way you ensure that is through this Libra energy, this justice or adjustment card. Check in yourself, right? Check in yourself. Always, always evaluating your choices, your decisions, things that come your way. You're evaluating, is this really me? Am I staying true to myself? You know, if you're an artist, right? Staying true to yourself and not just kind of going in a direction that the fans or the record company uh, kind of, you know, or the advertisers like want you to go. Staying true to who you are and what you do. That's the authenticity that you're looking for. And that's, I think, why we've got air and water and we've got the air and water here together combined that you are, you're operating with that central truth always, always within, you know, it's always there for you. And that's, that's the truth by which you are, see, because the, the justice card is also holding that Ace of Swords. Every decision you make, every opportunity, every option, right? Every action you take is going to be judged, be weighed against this central truth, okay? That's how you stay authentic in your life. And I think this central truth, this realization of whatever this is, it's coming in a flash. I don't think anybody expected it, especially you, because here's the moon card in the environment. It seemed like the future was dark and uncertain. We just didn't know where to go or what to do. You know that you have this potential for what, whatever, the, the capacity to love, right? The capacity to create and to be and to express and to do uh, and to connect and all this stuff. But you didn't quite know where to put it. The future's uncertain here in this, this moon energy. It's darkness. It's a doorway, but it's a dark one. And we can't see what's on the other side, right? But you can because you're getting this illumination here. I want to do one of these divine doorway cards. These are some fun, um, they're just little affirmation cards. I like the moon as the doorway, right? And it could be that there is an opportunity that you are approaching and it's one where you can't really see the other side. You know, you can't really see the outcome clearly, right? Divine guardian, 
Do not be nervous today or tonight. The path you are on will lead you just right. Well, that's beautiful. I think that's some really good reassurance for this, especially since we don't know we don't know what is going through this doorway. And it could be that, you know, this is the, generally the future of your career, the future of your creative endeavors. Um, this is where you're taking this central truth and this, this potential, this capacity to love and to create. You're going through that, that doorway. There's a big change coming for you, right? A really big change. And this is the first step. This is like, this is that jackpot. And it could be this jackpot that ruins our lives or is the best thing that's ever happened to us. It all really depends on how you approach it, right? You approach it with authenticity. You stay true to yourself, true to your word. You do not betray your spirit, your soul, yourself. You act prudently and wisely, right? You stay authentic. And this is you now on the other side of this doorway, um, staying true to yourself, that doing exactly what we're talking about here. This is you doing it. And the Eight of Pentacles is you taking this jackpot, taking this kind of a pot of gold, right? And uh, the Eight of Pentacles is you doing the right thing with it. You're straying, staying true to yourself. What do you care about? Let's select the mystery card before we get too far into this. I kind of, I'm, I'm very excited by this. So I started kind of, uh, I started diving in. But we don't want to forget about the mystery card. This is a random card from the Smith Waite Tarot. This is the factor infinite and unknown. And we're going to just set it down over here. We're going to put Tiny Bob Ross right on top. Now, Tiny Bob Ross was selected uh, through the poll that we did on the um, community page here on YouTube. And I think I'm going to do a poll every, uh, I don't know, maybe every Saturday or Sunday night. I'll put out a poll to select the next guardian of the mystery card. Um, and then that shift will start um, on that Monday, I would say, yeah. It would start on Monday. And then it'll, it's going to basically be two cycles of readings until we get to another Monday, um, and it'll be a new, a new Guardian of the Mystery card. Okay, so uh, Tiny Bob Ross will be here until Monday. Uh, <clears throat> and on, on, well, I guess... Yeah, I guess probably Saturday night I'll put out a, uh, I'll put out a new poll and we can select a new one. All right. Anyway, uh, that card, it, we're not going to look at it till the end, but it will tie everything together. And if you have a hunch about that card, put it down in the comments, right? Let's do it together. I think we need to work on our intuition. I think you're getting tremendous intuition right now. I think that something has happened and you've opened up this pathway to receive this divine influence, to receive the messages, the clarity. The download, it's coming in loud and clear and, um, and uh, you know, un unadulterated, right? It's a, the message is, is really being understood properly. So let's keep that going, you know. Uh, we have our major arcana card with the justice or adjustment and the moon. Those are our two majors, right? Why are they, why are they here? Well, um, this doorway, the moon energy, that's a scary thing, right? And the only way that you're going to make it through this is, this is if you continually to do these, these minor course corrections, these minor adjustments to your, uh, to your, your trajectory. Yeah. It's, these, it's, life is made in those small moments, those little decisions that we make a thousand times a day. That's what creates a life. Right? That's what is going to lead us through this doorway in a way that is, is good for us. Right? We'll be unscathed through this. But it's just these little minor adjustments. It's like you've got this tiny little wheel on your ship and you just have to move every second. You've got to move a little bit different. And we'll get through this. We'll get through this um, next, oh, I don't know, next few days, maybe next week or two. Um, and, and see what's really on the other side of this. Because I, I do feel like you're approaching this doorway where your life will change. And how that change affects you and affects others around you, that's what we need, the discernment and the evaluation, the judgment, really, of the adjustment card. Okay? We've got to adjust our, uh, our ship, 
our behaviors, our decisions, that sort of thing. Uh, I really do like that ace of pentacles up here. That that is beautiful. That is the that is a real jackpot. Um, this is the beginning of a new path of success for you. I don't know if you're an artist, a musician, uh, if it's a business thing, it's a family thing. This is the decision maybe to uh, start a charity or a foundation or it's a spiritual religious thing. Maybe this is, uh, maybe it's a big move. Maybe you're, um, maybe you're, you've made the decision to, to relocate or something, right? We've got a lot of fire energy underneath us though. We really are ready to do this. You are fired up. And I think the 10 of wands was, you've been fired up. I think we've exhausted that energy trying to figure out what our move is. We've been looking for this certainty and this clarity, right? And there was a point, I think, where you, you kind of were exhausted by it. And it's kind of, um, I'm, I'm getting this feeling of you just kind of going inside and taking a nap. And then when you wake up, you've got the answer, you know? Um, and now you're just, you're fired up again. You're ready to go. It's like this fire energy just was replenished and, uh, and it's all there. You're fully fueled up, you know? So the fire energy is really good. And I also, I believe that this is, is, is affecting other people in your life. I'm getting this kind of family energy, but I don't know if it is, um, I don't know if it's, if it's blood family, if it's like the work family or if it's the friend, you know, family. But I feel that there's a closeness with other people in your life. And may, it may be one particular person that you're very close with. Yeah, it could be a spouse or a best friend or something, or a business partner, an artistic collaborator, right? Maybe you're part of a, of a duo, right? Of artists or musicians or something. But I feel that there's a tandem energy, right? Uh, also, the tandem energy that I'm feeling with the Ten of Wands is you in tandem with spirit. Okay? And I think that's really the source now of this kind of this seemingly infinite energy. It's like you just took a little three-hour nap and now you're ready to go again. Um, and on that note, I do think that you've been getting less sleep lately. But it's like, it's like you don't need as much, right? It's like maybe at one point we just, oh, I'd get seven, eight, nine, ten hours of sleep. Now it's like two or three hours and you're ready, right? Uh, and I think it's because you are working in tandem with spirit. And that's kind of the, the source of this infinite energy. Now it's not infinite. It may be a lot more than usual. So it feels infinite, but it's not. So make sure you take care of yourself, okay? I mean, serious, that's, that's important. With the Eight of Pentacles as well, there's this idea of, okay, look, this is a really exciting thing. Could you imagine the, the Knight of Wands here on this horse charging into this unknown dark, place. I mean, this is a leap into the, the abyss and I, all the blood is pumping. And on the other side, it's like, now you're expected to just calm down. Right now we're expected to switch it off and just kind of be, be baseline, be normal, right? Um, to be relaxed. You know, this is a high stress, high tension kind of thing. This is a lot of, um, you know, uh, chemicals in our in our um, endocrine system and and hormones and stuff adrenaline and all this kind of thing and we're really pumped up you know because we're we're diving into an abyss we you know we're, we're taking this huge risk in our for, for our future uh, based on this confident certainty okay um, and then when we get to the other side when we land on our solid ground then it's just kind of like now you've got to figure out how to turn that stress off how to turn that heat down again. What we really need here is a five of wands in that mystery position. Because it's, I think, very difficult when you've been in a high stress, um, fast paced situation, like I feel the fire energy is kind of talking about. It's, it's difficult to make that transition now to calm, peaceful life. You know, how do we do that? Sometimes we need some help. Um, you know, sometimes it's a, it's a process that we have to go through uh, personally, and it takes a little bit of time, but we do it, you know. And I think it's very important that we focus on that, too. We focus on being authentic, of course, uh, but focus on taking care of yourself, your body, your heart, your mind, right? Uh, so if we need some assistance, reach out, you know, and, and ask for that assistance, we have to really uh, find a way then to, we can't live in that high stress, high tension energy 
24-7. It's just not good for us, right? We've got to find a way to kind of um, to modulate that energy, that creative force. And I think it's going to be even more difficult because once you start on this new path, feeling as if you finally have found the right outlet for all of your creative energy, you're going to be even more fired up, right? And, you know, Leo, I think you can really do that. You can go on very little sleep. You know, when you're, when you're really set on something, when your heart is really in it, you can, you can just keep going and going and going and going. And um, I think it's important to have the reminder to slow down, that once, this, once the, the big kind of move is over, we've got to be able to calm down. We've got to let some of the stress go, and we've got to try to live a little bit slower paced. Okay? But we don't want to stop either. Okay. You've got to keep going forward, but now maybe we can slow our roll a little bit. Yeah. And it feels that we're still moving, right? Our blood is still pumping, our muscles are still working, but we're just not going pedal to the metal right now. And that's the Eight of Pentacles, learning how to slow down just a little bit. Okay. Um, I wonder what this expression is. This I'm, I'm curious about this because it it feels like something creative, but it's something that really is, is there to connect people. It's, it's connecting you with other people. Okay. And it really, this, this could be if you are relocating your, your family, right? This is you in your new community, connecting with that community, feeling like I belong here. Like this is like, I'm resonating with these people and I feel welcomed and I'm welcoming them. And it really just, it feels like a family. Okay. Um, if this is creative, then this, this is really, I think, pretty obvious in a creative sense. And I think everything is creative. I think we are creators, you know, and you're creating in tandem with spirit, which gives this kind of, you know, a uh, unlimited potential, really what this could be, but it is an expression of your true self and you are striving to maintain that authenticity. You don't want to be changed by the environment that you're in. Now, we will be, all of us, of course. But you are still staying true to yourself, to your principles, your beliefs, right? Uh, the reason, whatever this flash of insight was, you're staying true to this. This is the truth, right? I like this very much. I want to look at the mystery card. I wonder if maybe, I mean, it depends on what the emphasis, it depends on what spirit wants to really emphasize for us. We could emphasize the fire energy and the need to modulate this. We could emphasize perhaps the water energy and see how this experience, as it unfolds in the future, is going to really um, give you that sense of belonging and that sense of community, that sense of satisfaction that sense of accomplishment as well, right? Um, Spirit's also telling me that you had some sort of a, a medical issue when you were a kid. Either you got really sick and everybody was worried about you or there was like a big, a big injury or illness or something. You're, just, you're in the hospital for a while when you were a kid, right? Yeah, it's important that we take care of ourselves. Yeah, and I think that's something that's already on your mind. I don't think this will be the five of wands. I think this will be some water energy. If you have a prediction, I want you to put it down in the comments. All right. Let's see what we have. Uh, four of cups. It is water energy, but it's kind of you refusing the water, right? Um, I think what this really is though, I don't, I don't think this is you necessarily refusing the water. This is you refusing something that goes against your authenticity right? This is your ability using your discernment, your spiritual discernment with the justice card and that ace of wands, or ace of swords, excuse me. Using that discernment to say no to things, you know? It's like you accept this. It's kind of, that's, that, that would represent selling out, and you're not doing that. Because if you refuse that fourth cup, what do you have? You have the three, you have your kind of, you have this potential still in you. It's intact, right? If you 
are accepting this fourth cup, it's kind of like you are um, you're giving somebody else the power over this. You're you're letting this kind of um, you're letting this potential spill out in a way. You know, so it's it's interesting. You know, we we want to express ourselves. We want to get this this energy flowing. If we accept this fourth cup, it kind of creates a, a, it creates a it's a four, right? It's stability. It's a temporary manifestation, but it's something that's that's kind of solid. It's not moving. We'd rather keep it as a three of cups because at least that is something that is still moving around. The three of cups is kind of like one of those cement mixers where it just keeps turning, you know, to keep the cement inside from, from drying out, I guess. I don't know. It's like mixing it, you know. Uh, that's kind of like the three of cups. But the four, now the four is that concrete has been poured into the, the wooden frame and that's it. It's not yours anymore. Right? So in some ways, this is you kind of um, turning this energy into a product, and now it's just not yours anymore. Does that make sense? So I feel you're refusing things in your life that would, that would limit your freedom of creativity, that would limit your freedom of expression. So in some ways, it's almost like we don't want to produce anything at all. It kind of feels like one of these artists that will make something, it's almost a performance art rather than a, a piece of art. You create something and then you just destroy it, you know, and maybe you sell the pieces or whatever. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Um, but that's kind of what I feel here. It's like we don't want to create a product. We don't want to make a product of ourselves, right? Um, but this is, this is really all to say that you're, you're able to refuse things that may be tempting, you may be really thirsty and someone's offering you this wonderful glass of water, but then what is your obligation to them? So this, I think, is representative of you remaining authentic in your life. Yeah. We may be really, really hungry. Someone comes by and offers us a plate of food, but at what cost? Right? Somebody offers you a record deal. Okay. But at what cost? We have to be very discerning. We don't just take the first record deal that comes our way. Maybe you got to get a lawyer. Maybe, the, maybe this is um, this is that. This is you, you know, looking at the contract with a fine tooth comb, giving it to a lawyer to look at, or a professional, you know, whoever like does that sort of thing, to make sure that this is in line with your principles. Make sure that there's nothing here that is, uh, you know, taking advantage of you, or that is costing you something that you're not willing to pay hidden costs, right? So I wonder if there is a, a legal aspect to this. I'm starting to wonder if there, there's a lawyer here somewhere, right? I'm, kinda, I'm feeling that there is. Anyway, uh, we're going to do an extended reading. If you want to stick around for that, there's a link up in the corner. There's one down below. New readings for Leo every Tuesday and Saturday. Uh, 6 a.m. Chicago time. I'm here every day. You can come see me again tomorrow. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It is totally free. It does not cost you anything. Leave a comment. Let me know where in the world you're watching from. Yeah. I want you to know that you are the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you. And we're all in this together.